What's up, everyone? With Prince Renathal back in the standard ladder for one month, I'm going to present two decks that I think you should play if you want to play Prince Renathal in a list, and two decks that you should play if you want to beat Prince Renathal. So we're going to just go straight into it. Um, you know, people are going to be playing all types of Ren Reno Renathal lists, whether it's like Priest or Warrior or Shaman. Um, but in my opinion, these two... Uh, lists right here are by far the best type of archetypes you can play if you plan on playing Prince Renathal. But before we get into it, let's just talk a little bit about Renathal and what he does. I personally hate this card. I think this card is disgusting. Um, I've always hated it in all the formats it was in, and it's meta-defining. When you have access to Renathal, it slows the meta down so much, and it makes decks that are overly value driven much much stronger so and this is the unbuff renathal this is the three mana three four 40 card 40 health version not the 35 uh version right so i mean it's just crazy and this will be playable for the entire month until november 5th so in my opinion like it really this this really hits specs like uh um like pirate demon hunter kind of gets hurt even, I would say, even Evolve Shaman or the Rainbow Shaman decks, they get kind of hurt a bit, uh, kind of hurt a bit. One deck that doesn't really get hurt is Extra Large Mage, or Big Spell Mage, as you, you know, we've known to call it. I think this list, this list is, um, I believe, No Hands Gamer. Someone played this to rank one legend. I think this is uh, a very fun list. There's a couple cards that you could probably change around. But one thing I want to... Uh, bring to your attention that's different than typical big spell mage list is that you're not we're not playing um the five drop uh what is he called tide guy surfalopod like you don't see a surfalopod in this list but this list is very cool i want to talk about just a couple cards in the list that i think make it make it very interesting a little a list to play um you got an amplifier that's kind of cool. Cold neophyte, okay. You got you you know you got choices of two drops. There's no greedy partner in here. Uh, obviously you have Renathal, and then you have a reverb reverb. So remember, Renathal adds ten more cards to your deck, pretty much. So you know you get some flexible tech choices, or you double up on some consistency. But one thing I really like in this list and many lists now is, is Robocaller. So if you were to top deck this and play him, you would get an 8-8 eight, eight, and 8-cost card if you had them in your library, or in your deck, right? And right now, he only there's only one 8-cost card in the deck. It's Calicos, right? But the cool thing about this is this changes every turn, and you'll notice that we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So we have cards at every part of the curve, and we have a pretty nice mana curve, although it kind of peaks over at uh, 10. So Robocaller most in most situations will always draw you two to three cards and i think that is pretty sick this is a great deck to have him in a great fill seashell good card um like i said we're not running surfalopod so because we're not running surfalopod we're not going around that combo anymore which means we can play something like galactic projection or in the main deck this deck is super sick like honestly i i have a lot of fun I don't know if it is as efficient as traditional big spell mage, but Renathal is available. You might as well play a deck that's going to shore up your worst matchup. And the worst matchups were Demon Hunter and uh, Warlock, right? So now that you get that extra 10 health, maybe that slows the game down enough for you to have success. I've been playing this all day, and I think this deck is really good. So give that a try. Another... Um, Renathal list that I like is just playing a Reno deck with Renathal in it and I like Druid uh, and this is just like I mean Druid is all about just playing big ass cards right so your early game has Cactus Construct, Miracle Salesman Gift Wrap Well the obvious one drops right but then you curve that out into New Heights right and then Obviously, in this middle splish splash well, they're all good early game drops. And then as you reach your end game, that's when you're just playing big bomb after big bomb. So uh, just uh, a downright very, very strong deck. Reno is very strong in this format, especially now with the meta slowed down. Um, I think it's a pretty good deck. 
That said, there are ways to combat Reno. And one way is to be able to just burst down the opponent. Like Pirate Demon Hunter is a little too slow because it's hyper, or is, is in a worse situation because it's hyper aggressive. It has to overcommit on a board. It has to go super wide early to survive or to, to win the game, right? And with the extra 10 health, now some of these decks can buy just a little bit uh, more time to kind of stabilize and beat you. So a way around that is not to to uh, out aggro them or to to have a faster clock. The way to beat them is to disrupt their game plan. And I think there's two decks that do this relatively well. Um, you know, this is to me of all of the Razzle Dazzler versions. This is the most consistent one. Uh, Double Frost one and Holy. Um, Blood is better if you want versatility and long games. But if you're playing Blood Death Knight or any Blood Ruined version of Death Knight, uh, Control Death Knight, in a meta that's full of control, you're better play. You're better off playing something else. So I personally like the Double Frost because it activates more spells quicker because you have Horn of Winter. So this is a pretty traditional less like. It's running double corpsicle. You could probably kill one corpsicle, but it's running double corpsicle, double down with the ship, uh, a malted magna for the fire uh, spell school. You got the natural talent in there, right? You got the horizon's edge, and then you have marrow manipulator. This is just a ton of burst, right? And I think this is a pretty clean, pretty efficient list. Yeah, you can make a, a tech choice here or there, but I find this to be the best of all Razzle Dazzle Death Knight lists. And I think it fights into the 40-card decks pretty well. But one deck that I think you should definitely play, and I played this to Legend this some, this season, uh, is Secret Hunter. Secret Hunter is very, very good against Renathal decks. Decks that are greedy and value-oriented struggle with the Secret Package because the Secret Package disrupts tempo so well. Playing around Secrets when you have, like, inconsistent cards in hand is is very challenging and that's the problem with uh Renathal decks they're they're just too inconsistent 40 cards right so they're not getting you know maybe maybe they're playing a Highlander or a Reno version or whatever it may be so you know they're not getting the consistency of duplicates in their deck and and that is difficult for them to deal with because you got cards like Ice Trap, Hidden Meaning, Bait and Switch all of these ways to kind of like affect the tempo of your opponent and observer of mysteries and titan forge traps this is where these cards just really really like shine give this deck a uh, try I mean, there are different secret hunters lists you can change this it doesn't have to be exactly like the list that you see here i kind of like this start um but yeah these are the four decks that i recommend i'll probably you know unless someone comes up with something very very interesting these would probably be the four decks that i I play for the, the rest of the season until the expansion comes out, um, especially Secret Hunter and Razzle Death Knight as I look to get those thousand wins on each class. But anyway, let me know what you're playing. In the, uh, let me know in the comments what you're playing, and good luck on your client. See you next time.